An SMP and a postback both fulfill the same purpose, and that is to prove academic capability. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAD. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I am excellent. What can I help you with? Um, I wanted to talk about my DIY postback. Okay. So just for some background info, I graduated in spring 2020. My science GPA was below a 3.0, but my cumulative was about a 3.1. Okay. I am c- currently in my third semester of my post back, but I'm having a little bit of c- some concerns about it. So I wanted to bring it to your attention, ask for some of your advice. Okay. What are your concerns? Uh, my first concern is that my cumulative GPA and and as well as my science GPA in undergrad was a complete downward trend. And I'm I'm a bit discouraged that although I'm in a DIY post back right now, that negative or downward trend might still be um, like overshadowing everything else on my application. The downward trend from your undergrad pre post back. Yes. I, I, there's nothing you can do about it. Right, It's there. The only thing that you can do right now is focus on the grades or the courses that you're in right this minute to get the grades necessary to overshadow that downward trend. You can only do what – you can only control what is in your kind of control. Right? Um, you can only control the courses that you're in now. As of right now, we don't have time machines. You can't go back in time and change what happened. You can't control how a medical school is going to review your application with that downward trend. The only thing that you can do is put your best foot forward every single day from here on out and show the medical schools that that downward trend was just a blip. And that's not the student who they are going to get when they accept you. Thank you. You're welcome. What else? Um, so I'm still in my post back. I planned on taking classes next semester, but I was going to apply to an SMP, a linkage SMP, which I haven't. No. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> uh, I still have to take the MCAT, but I think the MCAT is more important. So I was going to take the semester off from my post back and study and take the MCAT. You're doing a post back right now. Yes. You don't need to do an SMP. An SMP and a post back both fulfill the same purpose, and that is to prove academic capability. It's almost always one or the other. There are very few exceptions where someone does a post back program, a do it yourself post back or a formal post back, and doesn't do well in that post back. And then as the final lifeline, they go and do an SMP program. If you're doing well in your post pack program, save the 50 grand for the SMP, do well on the MCAT, and apply to medical school. Unfortunately, these programs dangle this linkage out there like, ooh, like come to our program. It's going to be even easier for you to get into medical school. And it's just, it's not the case because you still have all the pressure of doing well in that SMP program. And you may get to that program and and whatever linkages that that program has to the medical schools, you may, as you continue to grow and get wiser and figure out who you are, you may not like those schools that the the program has linkages to. And now, all of a sudden, you're at an SMP program that you went to for a linkage that you don't really want to link at, and you're out applying in the regular application anyway. So Mm -hmm. it's not worth the time and money just for the potential of getting into a medical school with a linkage program. And a lot of times the linkage is just an automatic interview. It's not even an acceptance. Um, I would say I'm doing well in my program. I could be doing better. Um, I'm only taking about two classes a semester due to finances. So I'm not sure exactly when I will be done my post back. Okay. Uh, My goal is to continue taking classes to get my science GPA above a 3.0. Okay, ideally above a 3.0. But you have to do the math. Like, is it going to take you 10 years to get above a 3.0? If it is, then it's not worth it. Um, But ideally, the trend is what you should be focusing on more than that final number. 
Although above a 3.0 is this very general kind of rule of thumb that everyone gives out, it's not a hard and fast rule that everyone has to follow and that every medical school is going to filter you out based on. So if you can get the, the courses that you need to have 30, 40 credits at above a, a, at as close to a 4.0 as possible, that's great. What concerns me is that you just said, I'm doing okay, I could be doing better. Mm-hmm. What is preventing you from doing the best? Um, I do have other, I guess, responsibilities other than the post back. I'm currently doing a part-time job at a medical school to help pay for the classes. And on top of that, I just have other family responsibilities. Okay. And when you say you're doing okay, what's your what's your GPA roughly in your postback program? Around a 3.5. Okay. So still not stellar. <laughs> what's going to change if you do an SMP? Um, I wouldn't be working. It'll be primarily... I'd be primarily focusing on school. And that's because financial aid will help because it's a, a master's-based program, so you can get financial aid for that. So that that's always kind of the biggest difference between undergrad, post and SMPs or, or any other sort of master's program is that financial aid piece. And that is the, when I said, like the rare exception of students who go to a post and then do an SMP – it's almost always for that same specific reason that you have of I'm doing my post back, but I have to pay for it. I have to work to pay for it. I have family to take care of. I have this, I have that, I have this. And so you can't dedicate yourself to the post back program. And so the program that you're supposed to be doing to prove academic capability, you don't have the bandwidth to prove academic capability. And that is that is almost always the case where I see students do a post back first and then do some sort of master's program after. And ultimately, it's up to you. If you feel like you're going to be better suited doing an SMP, not because of, because of a linkage or not because of whatever, but because it will allow you to stop working so that you can focus almost exclusively on your courses, then go for it. Stop doing the post back and go for the SMP. The biggest warning that I want to give you is you have to get as close to a 4.0 as possible. You just have to. I wanted to also talk about my volunteer experience. Uh, in undergrad, I was a student government. I was chair for community engagement. So I focused a lot on community service. So I have a cumulative amount of hours of 100, maybe 110, but they're doing different things. I didn't know uh, if it would be more important to have one main community service event that I've done throughout the years or a cumulative amount of hours doing different. Yeah, it, it ultimately doesn't matter. That that kind of stuff is very, uh, when I talk about micro versus macro, that's a very micro, like super nitty gritty question that almost every medical school is just not going to care about. You have community service, great. Do you have clinical experience? Great. Do you have shadowing? Great. Do you have research? No? Oh, well, that's okay. Are your grades good? Is your MCAT score enough? Let me read your story. Awesome. Let's talk to you. They're not going to go, well, you don't have more than 10 hours in any one activity, so therefore we don't think you're dedicated enough, right? I I wouldn't worry about that sort of thinking. Okay, so... Regarding the work and activity section, would it be better to list the different activities? Like I did this event for 20 hours, this event for 20 hours, or kind of just explain as a whole, I worked a cumulative of 100 hours doing these numerous activities. Yeah, ultimately it's up to you. And you're limited in terms of spaces for the AMCAS application. For the ACOMAS application, you're not. So the ACOMAS application, the TMDSAS application, you're not limited. So you could theoretically put each individual one. It's like five hours here and 10 hours here and 15 here, whatever. For AMCAS, you're limited. You only have 15 spots. And so that's typically the limiting factor is is how many spots you have on AMCAS. There are no rules when it comes to how you do this. If there was one activity that stood out amongst all of the rest, you could theoretically put that on its own. 
and that was 10 hours and the other 90 hours go in go into one other activity where you just say hey i was involved in lots of different things and let me just tell you a little story of of one of the most important ones this comes up a lot with athletes college athletes because usually as part of their athletic responsibilities is community service same thing with greek life i i see a lot of people that are involved with greek life fraternity sororities etc who do a lot of little community service things uh, and and they just put that in their application as as just kind of general volunteering and then not listing every little thing in the activity description, but just saying as as part of my sorority, we were involved in many uh, volunteer opportunities. The one that stands out the most is X, Y, or Z. I do. So I, I did mention that I work at a medical school part time. I'm working in the COVID lab. Okay. And when I when I was offered the position, I was told it was clinical experience, but I'm not working with patients. So <laughs> I wasn't sure how to list that on my work and activity section. Yeah. We're not doing research, but it's yeah. also not. So are are you working at a medical school or are you working at a hospital that's affiliated with a medical school? I'm working at the medical school. How, what what is the medical school doing with COVID? Uh we're taking the COVID samples and running them through PCR. Of the students, faculty and students, yes. Okay, all right. So you're you're basically working in a lab, mm-hmm. um, like a just a, a lab lab. Okay, yeah. I, I it, that's a hard one, right? It's it, it's clinical, right? By all intents and purposes, you're doing clinical things. You're working in a lab, basically uh, doing PCR and what, very similar to people who are spinning blood and doing other stuff in a lab. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't call it clinical. Are, are you taking the samples? Or are you just running the PCR? I take the samples. If you're taking the samples, right, you're sitting there poking their nose, like I would call it clinical then because you're interacting with them. Oh, I thought you meant like I collect the samples, like um, someone else does the COVID test and then they deliver the samples to the lab and we take okay. them. Yeah. So if you're not interacting at all with the patient, I probably wouldn't call it clinical. You could, right? Again, there's no rules. You could call it clinical and let the medical schools decide. Going back to what I mentioned earlier about the MCAT. So I was planning on taking another semester of classes for my post back. Mm-hmm. But I started reading a little bit of your book on the MCAT, the pre-med playbook, and I realized that the MCAT is almost like a three credit course. <laughs> so I wanted to I wanted to cut down on my classes or maybe just take one class yeah. and focus on the MCAT. I just um, I guess I'm kind of worried about managing my time with work and bringing it down to one class and focusing on the MCAT. If you're going to do an SMP, why continue to take classes? I was, I think the application is due in April and okay. I registered for the March, the March MCAT. So I okay. was going to, I guess, apply to the SMP and still take another class. I think I was going to take anatomy and physiology too, because I'm currently in anatomy and physiology one. So I wanted to take both classes. But why? If you're going to do the SMP, what's the point in paying for a class that you don't need? And take time away from studying for the MCAT, potentially. Let me preface also with the fact that one of the reasons I don't like SMPs and and other master's programs, uh, specifically tailored for pre-med students, is they require an MCAT for admission. Right? Mm-hmm. The whole point of an SMP in my mind and a post program in my mind is to solidify your knowledge and understanding of the sciences, get good grades to prove academic capability, and use that foundation, that newly found foundation, to do well on the MCAT. And these programs flip it and go, prove to us that you're going to do well in our courses by doing well on the MCAT. It, it's gaming the system, in my mind, what they're doing is they are saying, take the MCAT first. If you do well enough there, come and take our cl- uh, our classes. We'll assume you'll do well enough. And, and they're basically screening out people who potentially are going to do well in their courses, but maybe struggle with the MCAT and potentially not get into medical school. So they're just gaming the system and gaming their numbers, saying, oh, look, we have a 95% 
success rate in, in getting students into medical school. I'm like, yeah, because you filtered out everyone who struggled with the MCAT because you made them take it early because they didn't have a solid foundation that you were supposed to teach them. Mm-hmm. So random, random uh, soapbox. Um, so the course you don't need, right? You're like, well, maybe I should finish anatomy and physiology too. You don't need it. So focus on the MCAT if that's your goal. Anything else? Um, I did, I guess one other thing I was a bit worried about. So my current semester right now, I'm taking two courses at community college. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that's often frowned upon in the pre-med community. I wanted to know if I should mention this in my personal statement or one of my secondary essays. Nope. I guess a it's gonna go red in your transcript. flag prompt. It's not a red flag. It's not a red flag at all. Okay. You're fine. Lots of students okay. go to community college. There are lots of reasons to go to a community college. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Is that it? That's it for me. All right. Well, when you do study for the MCAT, take a look at Blueprint MCAT. Go to them now, blueprintmcat.com. Sign up for a free account. Use their flashcards and start start studying your flashcards when you're just standing in line waiting for, for your Starbucks, whatever. Um, and and utilize them at least for their, their free resources. Okay. They'll help you. It'll help you a lot. Thank you. You are welcome. Thanks for coming on and uh, good luck in your path. Thank you so much, Dr. Gray.